We love horsepower. Sure, you can have fun in a Miata, but there's this visceral excitement that can only be felt with an excess of ponies. The problem, well, is that horsepower costs money right? Well, maybe not. In this video, we're going to go over nine vehicles that make a ton of horsepower for a lot less than a ton of dough, which would make a, a lot of pizza, right? I mean, would be a, a lot of money. Man, I'm hungry. Anyways, I'm your friend Brad Danger, and we want you to go do donuts on the skid pad after you like, uh, comment, subscribe in one of these awesome inexpensive powerhouses. So buckle up and let's go. Now, we read through the comments, and we know your complaints already. Oh, Brad, paying $20,000 for a $300,000 car doesn't make it cheap, and that's just a high mileage rust bucket. So this time, we have some rules. Each of these cars was found on cars.com easily. Each one is under 10,000 bucks, and each one has less than 100,000 miles on it with no major defects. So. It is 100% possible for you to pick one up. Maybe after subscribing to our sister channel, Ideal Money, and uh, working on those ideal side hustles, or at least learning how to. And to keep you interested, each car we mention will have more horsepower than the last. But that doesn't mean we're starting with something that would uh, put you to sleep. In fact, it's one of my favorite cars ever. And you guys seem to love them too. It's the German 2JZ, the BMW 335i. And the 335i is one of the best performance values that you can get hands down. With its 300 horsepower turbocharged six cylinder and that world famous BMW driving feel, it really is an ultimate driving machine. And what propels it into stardom though, is the fact that with a few more dollars, you can tune it to 400 horsepower easily. And here we have one for 9.5K. But to get a really ideal deal, wait until one pops up on the Facebook marketplace after getting into a minor accident. You can handle a little bit of road rash, right? And you'll be getting a high performance car for dirt cheap. And if you're worried about that infamous BMW reliability, well, the next car on our list might be the one for you, since it has that famous bulletproof VQ series motor and shares a platform with the legendary Nissan 370Z. It's the more luxurious brother, the Infiniti G37. People don't think highly of Infiniti nowadays. They kind of developed a reputation of being the worst Lexus, but Back in the day, like the mid 2000s, Infiniti was actually crazy and they really thought they could take on German brands instead. And you guys remember the G35 and then there's the more powerful G37. And both of these were meant to go toe to toe with the BMW 3 Series. And with 330 horses, the G37 could actually beat most of the German competitors in a straight line. Nowadays though, hmm, they've been depreciating even harder than other sports cars, which means that you can pick one up for under 10K. And what I love is they came in coupe, convertible, and four door. And here's one that we found that's the perfect sleeper. It's rear wheel drive, it's a four door car with plenty of ponies to get you going slideways. And what, you're not into four seats? Well. No worries, there's an old standby that has your needs filled. A car for its entire run has been the everyman sports car. We're talking about the VET. Yeah, the Chevy Corvette. Now, why does everybody put an LS in everything? Because the LS is the most legendary motor in existence up there with the other greats like the RB and the 2JZ. And you can have one attached to a phenomenal platform for under 10 grand. That's right, probably my favorite Corvette generation, the C5 with those pop-up headlights, have finally started to drop below the 10K mark. And that means you can pick up GM's legendary sports car for cheap. Now, the older ones didn't quite make the crazy horsepower that the newer ones do, but they still give you a whopping 345 horsepower to play with. Here's one we were able to source for nine stacks even. Someone ruined it by eliminating those pop-up headlights, but at least people won't know because they're gonna be staring at your taillights instead. We know Corvettes aren't for everyone. And honestly, these ones are getting a little old. Thankfully though, Dodge has always been a cure for the itch. And those first and second gen chargers are getting really cheap. Now, I think we can all agree the Hellcat is a marvel of the modern world and proof that petrol heads can 
still exist in these trying times. But before Dodge made the Hellcat, Dodge was testing the waters with their new line of classically styled muscle cars. These V8 Chargers, Magnums, and Challengers were all based on the same platform, along with actually some other Chrysler offerings, but we'll get into that in a few. And even the base RT trims had over 350 horsepower. And here's a Charger for 8,500 bucks. But you want to be careful because, well, people love to drive these things hard and then uh, put them away wet. So what you want to do is find one that was owned by some older dude, you know, who was trying to relive his Dukes of Hazard days, because those guys probably took amazing care of the paint and never missed an oil change. And nothing against Dodge doing dodgy things, but I think we can get a few more horses if we head back to Europe and revisit the ultimate driving machines. This time though, with a six series, the BMW 650i. The BMW six series isn't as prolific as its M counterparts, but that just means that you and me can get 360 freaking horses power for cheap. Like it's legitimately hard to understand how much these cars have depreciated. When they were new, they were like $75,000 and adjusted for inflation, that's nearly $100,000 today, which means that you get this car for nearly 90% off of MSRP. Wow. And they're absolutely burnout machines. Not only that, but a six series is just incredibly nice to sit in. They came standard with just about every luxury feature you could ever want. And they even sprinkled in a few that you didn't even know you needed until you had them. Unfortunately, part of the reason that they're so cheap is that those luxury systems are notorious for failing. But I mean, so what? Your nav system is shot and the seats don't heat up anymore. <laughs> you still have a monster V8 to play with and you paid about the same as your buddy's clapped out Civic. And what? 360 horses isn't enough? Well, BMW's competition didn't think so either, which is why the Mercedes SL550 has 22 more horses and can sometimes be found for even cheaper. And if you're enjoying this video so far, hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm and go snag a little ideal swag up here. We got shirts, slaps, and hats. And I gotta be honest about one thing. We don't actually recommend getting an S550. The BMW 6 Series will bankrupt you in repairs. The Mercedes will bankrupt you and your family. But here's a 382 horsepower car for under $8,000. And it is way more tempting than we want to admit because you get Four doors, an interior that defined luxury, and an exterior styling that seems to never change. Which is nice because it means that even though they are a little bit older, no one is really gonna know that. So the secret's good with me. They'll just see you roll up in a Merc and assume that you're rolling in cash. And guess what? You don't have to tell them any different because Mercedes has a long history. They have a reputation of being for older people and their parents. Are you sure about that? But the next car on our list is also crazy luxurious, but it definitely doesn't have the reputation or history because as a car company, they're basically brand new. Yeah, we're talking about Hyundai, which rhymes with Sunday and their Genesis. Hyundai and Kia like to surprise people. When they first launched the Genesis Coupe, it was the successor to the Tiburon and it made okay-ish horsepower from a V6, but nothing to call home about. Then all of a sudden, Hyundai started a luxury brand called Genesis and their new flagship car was pushing 385 horsepower from a 4.6 liter V8. Now, they do make an even faster one with a five liter, but those rarely cost less than 15K. So their older siblings with the 4.6 can be found for under 10 all day long, like this red one that we found. And if you pick it up, just be prepared to explain it a lot. They sound good, the driving feel is on par with other luxury cars, and the interior quality is honestly top notch. But even now, most people don't know what the hell a Genesis even is, unless you're talking about classic rock. And because of the next car on our list, we are definitely talking about classic rock, with badges that became famous in the 1960s. Well, before you were born, and uh, I, I was already alive then. But this badge then disappeared for a very long time and then reappeared as an LS-powered rear-wheel drive from Australia. Yeah, we're talking about the Pontiac GT. Oh! 
Now, let me ask you a question. You probably heard about the Cadillac that has, well, a lot of horsepower. Yeah, the CTSV, me too. And the Chevy SS, because they are Corvette powered too. Well, do you know what else is Corvette powered? The Holden Monaro, or as those of us in the States know it as, the Pontiac GTO, which unlike the CTSV or the SS, can be found regularly for under that $10,000 mark in decent condition. In fact, here's one for under nine grand, and what do you get if you pick it up? Well, 400 horsepower. That's like three Miatas for the price of, of one. The best part is that since it's just a Chevy, these are the cheapest cars to own on our list. No BMW tax or Mercedes markup or rare Hyundai parts. You can just go to your local auto shop and grab cheap parts from the shelf and slap them on your LS. Now you knew we'd have to bring it back to America for horsepower. And for our next car, we're coming back to Mopar, AKA the king of cheap horsepower with the Hemi powered Chrysler 300C. Do you? And do I want over 400 horsepower? Yes, please. I think 400 horsepower is the perfect number on the street. If all you're doing is using it as a street car, 400 horses is, is kind of that perfect number. But if the car has a tad over 400, I'm not gonna complain and I don't think you will either. And before there was the Hellcat, there was the SRT Hemi with 425 horsepower. And while the Challenger and Charger still fetch a premium, the four-door tuxedo-wearing sibling has gotten C-H-E-A-P. See, the Chrysler 300 shares the same platform as the other muscle cars mentioned. It just has to look classier, but that lets it fly under the radar, even though the C-Trim means it has the same monster Hemi that the SRTs have. Here's one for $8,000. That's less than 20 bucks per horsepower. And I mean, do you think that you could buy a horse for 20 bucks? <laughs> No. So, I think it's fair to say that the 300C offers the cheapest horses you can buy, which makes it pretty ideal in my book. <laughs> Just be sure that if you pick one up, go snag some cheater slicks and lay down a couple of 11s and tag us in the pick at Ideal Cars Official on Instagram, which if you're not following already, you definitely should be. I'll link to it down below. And I know what you guys are thinking. Those 425 Mopar horses are pretty hard to pass up and would be one fun ride. But I know a lot of you prefer that German 2J BMW. Well, at least the German version of the 2J. So let us know down in the comments which one you would buy and why, if I were to give you 10,000 bucks. And as always, I'm your friend, Brad Danger. So hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm. And if you're new here, please subscribe, turn on that notification bell, because we have new heat coming at you pretty much every other day. Oh, I almost forgot. Don't forget to keep living the ideal lifestyle.